Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to review Aptos. For those who are unfamiliar with how my channel works, what I do is I feed research into a model. The model has an output. I weigh that output to reality. I reflect and modify the model to better correlate to uh, high ROI predict predictions in the cryptocurrency space. This is the model. The project is Aptos, and I'm going to just go ahead and dive right into it. All right, so what is Aptos? What is it dealing with? It is a scalable L1 based on the Move programming language. So that's going to be the biggest sales pitch here. It is uh, another L1 in the cryptocurrency space, um, a general uh, trust computer, and it's using a, a new programming language, Move, which is based on Rust. And we already have a couple of those, so this would be in that category of Rust-based or new... Um, virtual machine computers, uh, trust computers. It's developed by the Meta Group, which worked on the DM blockchain, or Libra, at, as it was once known, which got railed by regulators. So that's why they um, decided to go underground and try to re-approach everything. It's um, based on a parallel processing, ar parallel processing architecture, which means that it should be scalable. Um, Move is based on Rust. Move... Uh, Move was developed around uh, making safety the top concern in this blockchain. So that's what they're targeting is safety. Um, Libra, okay, so yeah, Libra was killed by regulation. That's where we get this project from. So uh, that's where it is along the uh, development process. Storage of data um, is in long term is unknown. Whenever you have a super fast blockchain like this, um, it develops, it, it gets a large blockchain and that's a lot of data that the store. So that'll be unknown how they store that in a decentralized way. Solana has the same issues. It's a massive issue with Solana and this project. Move is extremely easy for development. Um, and a uh, token issue on, oh, and one of the things, negative things to note here is the tokens issued on Aptos are by default centralized because they uh, leave the control of the issuer uh, to do whatever they want with that token. So that token will be centralized, but you know, any token that launches on top of this will be centralized in that fashion. But I'm going to dive into the model's predictive force. Um, what the model aims to do is predict price movement, you know, regardless of everything else. So um, future increase in demand for the token model expects that to be negative. Price uh, FOMO project expects that to be negative. Um, where we're at right now is, is it's under extreme hype. So that's why you're seeing red things here. Um, we'll get to that later as the model outputs. That we're under extreme risk right now with price because it's under extreme hype. Extreme, it's like up 4x in a month. Um, and we'll see some other reasons why that could be super negative. Um, regarding the roadmap, neutral roadmap, um, you know, just upgrades, uh, adoption, those kind of things. Um, money needed to uh, move price up, negative. Uh, tokens on the sell side to decrease. All right, so um, here's one of the negative aspects, the inflation component of this project. So you would see from the issuance in this project that we're in the danger zone towards the end of this year. Um, that's when you're going to have a big uptick in uh, towards Q4 of, the, of 2023. You'll see a big uptick in tokens that are released and uh, released for sale or released in circulation, circulating supply. Um, the most optimal entry from an inflation standpoint would be around Q2 of 2025. That's when you would really, because that's when the rate of change starts slowing down again. Um, and it's also past that 50% mark. Uh, so the inflation starts to decrease significantly after that. So that would be the optimal time from an inflationary standpoint would be Q2 2025. So that's why it's negative right here, because it went up so quickly. And now it's you know it's going to have huge issuance towards the year. So some at some point that those that value is going to want to you know possibly these are all spe um, probabilities possibly want to be realized. Um, recent price action that's another reason why you know it's got a huge market cap. It's a two billion dollar circulating, thirteen billion billion diluted. Um, that is you know these are the reasons why it's got this very high risk with it uh, with its uh, amount of tokens that it has etc. And you have VCs, um, insiders sitting on massive amounts of money. Um, 
So, you know, this is why the model is predicting these things. I saw this before with ICP. It's very similar in that metric. Now, here's some of the better things for once. Token supply distribution um, might not matter in the sense of PDEs. Like if it, if it, 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 it does burn the fees, fee token burns. Um, the token is used for network fees, and it also has token burns, which is like a dividend. It is DPoS, so the token is control of this. It is a governance token. So the token model is good. It has a good token model. Those are good things. It also has a very large market. So these are the, some of the good factors about this project. Um, and so it will have a price to earnings because this token is entitled to the growth of the platform. If the platform is successful, the, the token should be entitled to those cash flows. Now, once again, we're going to get into, uh, so if we can expect that if this project grows, that the token will be realizing those cash flows, well, let's get into the exponential growth. Is it getting customers? Well, it's new, so keep that in mind as I go over this information. But um, so what we see here is they had something called the ETH Aptos Bridge. That's failing to get adopted. In fact, it's negative growth since it's launched. So that is a negative mark right there. We have um, total value lock doesn't look to be growing either, even though the price has just recently shot up. We see uh, um, to total value in the ecosystem around fifty million. Um, you know, and these are not included because that's staking, but that's just generally where that is. And then we see um, network analytics from their own explorer. We see that it's got very t no usage. No one's using it. Well, you know, this is fine. This is all, most blockchains are not being used. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, that's why you want to buy blockchains when they're not under hype. Like this project is getting hype, but there's nothing to justify that hype. If we were seeing massive amounts of adoption with that hype, then you might be saying, okay, so the, that price movement is justified. In blockchains, we want to buy it on the down because no blockchains are adopted. None of them. I don't care which blockchain you're talking about. None of them are really adopted yet, but it will happen. This technology is getting very close to reaching those usability points, um, and I think that we will see some major applications probably this, if not this next cycle, in the next one. But it's going to happen because the technology is maturing, and it, and it does things that it, uh, you can't do without blockchains. Anyways, um, but that's where we're at. We're at no one really uses this. Um, you know, new accounts created generally trending down daily. You know, but all of these are practically zero, and this thing is brand new, so keep that in mind. I'm not coming out super negative against it. This is just the data. Um, finally, there was a developer report, and we can see that Polkadot is the number one with um, developers. Now, that a lot of people said that that is Chinese-based, so let that be um, your thoughts there with Polkadot. Cosmos, uh, Solana, uh, Bitcoin, um, those sitting up there at the top. Where we see Avalanche, Filecoin, and Moonbeam. Moonbeam is part of Polkadot, so that should be in Polkadot. Um, Aptos is down here at a, you know around uh, seventy-two developers, and this number varies. So you know that's where it is from a developer standpoint. So it's got a two to thirteen billion dollar evaluation, and some of these top players are sitting at a similar price, and yet they got maybe um, four times more developers. So. Keep that in mind as well. Once again, a new project. I don't want to um, hit, say that too much, though. All right. So, so that basically, that means we're not seeing any adoption to justify um, PDEs just yet for this. I would be looking to see that. So that you know, now um, it does have good liquidity depth. That means there's a lot of rich people that want to um, give it liquidity. So um, that could be manipulation. We saw that with Solana, that the big uh, VCs manipulate the price by leveraging, etc. because they have, you know, it doesn't take a lot to move price. So that's possible what that is. But still, it shows money's there. So I put that as neutral ultimately for the niche because it does have that support. All right. Um, now regarding governance, um, it has a good governance model, so I gave that rating green, and its vision is pretty good as well, so I gave that as green as well. Um, the team is very skilled. Um, Muhammad Shaka, CEO, he has many connections to the World Economic Forum, BlackRock Associates, uh, and he, you know, he had he was the CEO of Mevid Mevidio, a consensus real estate um, project. He also worked at Meta. Um, and the other founder uh, has a PhD in computer science, worked as a Yahoo engineer and Facebook engineer. So very skilled team. 
But I will say that um, they were not very transparent in, in the beginning. Now that might be because they're you know they had to deal with regulator or hammers. So let that be. Now here's another negative reason why I put the team as yellow or I put the, the backers as yellow. You have three arrows of failed um, venture capital company that is, has a huge amount of these tokens as well as Alameda. Alameda uh, and FTX. They were huge backers, so they have huge pools of this. That means there's connected people who really want to dump this token to like because they, they're illiquid. There's these entities that have failed. They have large amounts of this token. They want it to succeed. They're rich. Um, so, that, you know, they might manipulate it up so that later they can dump it and help mitigate the the obligations that those failed entities have. So keep in mind that a lot of like a lot of those fundings came from failed entities and they may, you know, want to manipulate it higher. Who knows? That's all I'm saying. All right. Um, but I did put because of this is ultimately yellow and the opaqueness and and the coming from Facebook, not the most trustworthy group of people, and the backers are not even trustworthy. That's one of the first times I've actually seen neutral ratings from the team. And so that makes everything neutral because when the team is not really trustworthy, I mean, it pretty much means everything's not trustworthy from that standpoint. All right. Um, and, and once again, now, will big businesses want to own this token? Probably not because they it already does have big business connections and they're probably going to be given a bag for collaboration. So that gets a – like, so we can't expect there to be huge business purchases because, of you know, they're going to already have bags um, through collab collaborative efforts. So that is that uh, – that is the model of review. Um, so final summary, the pros, the, um, the team is very skilled, very talented. They've done successful exits, very well connected. There's large money backers. It's got huge connections, major amounts of money in this. So you could expect it to get price movements up or down if for traders. This would be a very good trading project. Um, early development uh, code or easy development code. So this code, move language, um, one of their selling points is for developers. It's easier to use. It's Rust. Uh, it's a popular it, – it, it, or it's supposedly created to help bring developers into the ecosystem. The cons, extremely under hype risk right now. That hype is probably from the manipulation or from hype of, you know, like who knows what that word's coming from. But it has 4x in a month. Um, and it's got a very large cap with very no with no usage, so I wonder where that's coming from. Um, very low adoption and no sign of growth, so it's got like pretty pretty much no sign no PDE or infinite PDE because it's got no uh, cash flows right now. Right now, it's in the beginning. It could that these things could change uh, very quickly. Obviously, um, extreme high profit for insiders. This project was launched by a lot of insiders. It raised a lot of money. Those people are sitting on very big amounts of profits, especially before a recession. So that would make it even more lucrative to dump. Um, and we have very um, dangerous inflation towards the end of the year. Like there's going to be a lot of tokens released in the end of the year. And uh, the token does not appear to be trustworthy or, or I mean the team doesn't have, seem to be fully trustworthy from Facebook from, you know, this is just my perspective. Um, maybe the opaqueness, you know, the things like that. Um, these are just my perception. I could be completely wrong. Um, but this is just the way my model, which is a big reflection of me, sees things. All right, guys, um, that is the my model's review. I, I try to be as unbiased as possible. You can obviously see the bias on this one. Um, but, you know, I try my best to keep it neutral. Um, if you like that uh, unbiased information, um, please like and subscribe. Uh, and now next I'll go into my patron thoughts, my patron exclusive decisions. All right, later, guys.